Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. This is the first module of the course Managing Risk for Post-COVID-19 Recovery. The first module will be on understanding and identifying risk. There will be two parts to that module one. So we will be firstly explaining the different concepts. In fact, the whole module is about explaining the different methodologies, uh, terminologies and concept of hazard, shocks, stresses, risk, exposure, and vulnerability. So going through these terminologies is very important to understand risk and vulnerability in this post-COVID-19 recovery. We'll, we'll explain characteristics of shocks and stresses, the different sources of risk and exposure to risk, systemic risk, which are very important and which we've been focusing a lot since COVID-19, capacity behaviors and actions of individuals, communities, and countries. And we will be touching briefly on vulnerability. Vulnerability will be dealt in the other modules and we will be talking much more about the vulnerability concept and dimensions there. So the first aspect that we will be looking at is, will be hazard. In fact, the whole concept of risk and vulnerability revolve around the exposure to a hazard and the ability to manage the impacts of this hazard or these hazards. So what is a hazard in fact? It is a process, a phenomenon or human activity that has a number of impacts, consequences, which could be in terms of loss of life, injury, death, property damages, social and economic consequences, and even environmental consequences. So to make it, I would say simpler, we tend to categorize hazard in terms of natural hazard, human-induced hazard, and environmental hazard. Within natural hazard, we can split that further in terms of biophysical, hydrological, meteorological, climatological, biological, and these, they have different examples. For instance, within natural hazard, you will get a uh, in terms of meteorological subgrouping, you can get storm, extreme temperature. In terms of climatological, for example, you have droughts, wildfire. In terms of biological, for instance, you can have air, water, and vector borne diseases, etc. So this is these are natural hazards, right? And you have also human-induced hazard, so the other category. The other category, I can further group that, divide that, I would say, in terms of technological, societal. Technological will be pollution, industrial hazard. Societal may be in terms of civil wars, uh, political unrest, social unrest, economic recession, the financial crisis, for example, the environmental hazard can be in terms of environmental degradation, where there is deforestation, soil erosion, among others. So this is the concept of hazard, which we refer to, and we tend to split that into different groups and giving different examples to explain the breakdown of these different types of hazard. What we have seen over the years, that there has been a rise in the number of hazards or events, disaster events. And if we compare two periods, that is 1980 to 1999 and 2000 to 2019, we'll see that there has been a rise in the number of disaster events. These have been especially in terms of floods, storms, you will see that the figures are twice as much. And when we look at, at these different types of disasters which have been happening through the last decades, we will 
also be looking at the impacts of these disasters. How do we assess the impact? Some indicators could be in terms of death, total number of people affected, economic losses to countries. And when you compare the two decades, you, you can also note that the number of people affected have increased, the number, the amount of economic losses have nearly doubled, right? So things have been getting, uh, I would say, more difficult and with more number, with a greater number of disaster events. But at the same time, the impacts have been very important, significant to countries, communities, of course, to individuals. Sometimes in the literature, hazards are also referred to shocks and stresses, but there are differences between shocks and stresses. Shocks are external short-term deviations from long-term trends that affect enormously individuals, their well-being, their livelihoods, the level of assets, their safety, and also the ability to withstand future shocks. In fact, example of shocks could be uh, droughts, right? Flooding or disease outbreak. Whereas stresses are more long-term pressures, right? That affect the stability of a system and increase the vulnerability within it. Example of stress could be chronic poverty, climate var variability, increased population. So compared to shock, which are more short-term deviations, right? Stresses are more long-term trends and it increases, I mean, both will, will affect livelihoods of people, but also increase the vulnerability of communities and countries. We can further distinguish within the different characteristics of these shocks and, and stresses. We can split uh, shocks or classify them based on their scope or origin. Sometimes we, we, we differentiate or we define these uh, shocks and stresses in terms of covariant shocks or idiosyncratic shocks. What are covariant shocks? Covariant shocks impact large number of people in a given area, large number of households, large number of communities, regions, or even entire countries. So that's why we link covariant at a macro level, where the impact could happen at a macro level, at a country level, where you have a huge number of people, a huge number of communities living there. Whereas idiosyncratic uh, stock are more specific. They happen at a micro or meso level. The micro level means at the household or individual level. The meso level refers more to the community level. So it's mainly specific uh, individuals or household within a given community. So as per the diagram, you can see how we have split idiosyncratic and covariant shocks and how we link the impact in terms of micro, meso, macro. So covariant shocks, the impact will be more at a macro level. Idiosyncratic shocks will be mainly at a micro or meso level because it affects specific individuals, specific household within a community. When we look at shocks and stresses, they change over time, right? So there are different aspects that we need to consider. So what are these different aspects? First of all, whenever there is a shock, a hazard, we look at the intensity of that hazard, right? The magnitude of that particular hazard or particular shock. So it can be acute or with a number of impacts, a number of consequences, right? 
and it can be chronic as well, that is for longer period of time. So the time dimension, the intensity is very important, the frequency as well. So basically we can, we can split that as you can see in the, in the diagram there. We talk about frequency, that is whether it's common or rare, short, the duration, is it one off or is it persistent? Intensity, is it mild in terms of impact or it is catastrophic? So there is a range there and we need to classify these shocks and stresses according to these different characteristics or elements we are looking at. Is it idiosyncrasy in terms of limited or widespread affecting huge number of people or communities or affecting specific individuals or household. So these elements are important to look at. Timing, severity, geographical location, and frequency. Yeah. So whenever we tend to look at shock and stresses, these dimensions are vital or crucial to understand what we mean in terms of the shock and what will be the impact on communities or countries. But at the same time, shocks and stresses can occur at some point in time, at the same time, or they can occur consecutively, one after the other. So I would say that there is a complex interaction across the different shocks and stresses. They can coincide, like I mentioned, occurring at the same time or successively, right? But at the end of the day, in both cases, the adverse effects will be compounded. Some stresses or shocks can also be independent. Yeah, they are not related, but they can be interdependent, arising from a number of events, right? or arising also from a single event leading to other consequences. For example, let's take the example of drought. If there is a drought, it will affect crop and livestock production, and it can cause prices to be highly volatile on the market, right? Increasing prices leading to food insecurity especially for those households depending a lot on crop on the yield or livestock production. Many households, uh, depending on the agricultural sector, will find their income going down, right? So at the same time, they are likely to be vulnerable and this will affect their livelihoods. So there are a number of effects which will take place and which will impact them. So these effects will have a compound, these events, sorry, will have a compound uh, consequences on these particular uh, segments of the population. Now, we've talked about hazards, shocks, uh, stresses. The main element throughout the course that we will be looking at is risk and uncertainty. And of course, we will talk about vulnerability. Sometimes in the literature, we tend to use risk and uncertainty interchangeably, but there are different concerns. In fact, it is easier to manage risk than uncertainty. Risk can be quantified with known outcomes and probabilities of these outcomes. Whereas uncertainty can have different outcomes some of them are known, some of them are unknown. So the probability of these outcomes cannot be quantified. Risk, when we talk about risk, it goes beyond only the probability of an event happening. It includes also the negative consequences of that event. So it is the consequences of the interaction between a hazard, a shock or a stress happening and the characteristics that make people or places vulnerable and exposed. Once we talk about the characteristics that make people and places vulnerable and exposed to that hazard or shock or stress, then we come 
to the concept of risk because we will be looking at the consequences of that particular event. The World Bank definition of risk, uh, the World Bank definition of 2001, it defines risk as uncertain events that can damage well-being, the risk of becoming ill, for example, or the risk that a drought will occur, which we just mentioned earlier, and the uncertainty that can pertain to the timing or the magnitude of the event. For example, the seasonal fluctuation of farm income, you can know it is an event that you can know in advance, but you don't know the severity, yeah? So it's not always possible to predict the, the magnitude of a hazard or a shock. You may know when you will be having a, like, flash floods or high temperature, but what will be the impact, the consequences, the extent of that consequence, the magnitude of that consequence is different, is, is difficult to predict. Similar to shocks, we can classify risk in terms of idiosyncratic to covariant risk, right? So there are different types of risk natural risk, health risk, social risk, economic risk, political, environmental. And idiosyncratic, we know that it's more at a micro, meso level, and we can move, once we move to the macro level, then we talk about covariant. Now, for micro level risk, that is risk affecting individual or household, we can talk, if we take the example of social risk, it can be crime, it can be domestic violence, gender-based violence, right? At a meso level, it can be terrorism, gang activity. At a macro level, it can be war, social unrest, uh, political instability. So you see how it changes as we move from the micro to meso to macro dimension. The, the element, the risk element uh, broaden up, broadens up when we move across the different levels. For example, let's take economic risk. At a micro level, individual or household can be loss, loss of jobs, income loss, unemployment, as we move further, we talk about unemployment, or it could be a harvest failure, yield has been decreasing because of drought. And once we move to the macro level, then it could be like prices of food changing, increasing, food insecurity, other economic risk which, uh, could be in terms of financial crisis, balance of payment shocks, terms of trade shocks, etc. Environmental as well, it, it moves across idiosyncratic to covariant. So we can link these different types of risk at different levels and then look at the impact of these risks. So this is the first part of module one. The second part of module one will also be looking at exposure, vulnerability, etc.